Next, we're going to create your brand style guide. So all of the websites I've designed are a unique combination of websites I've loved at the time. Just like with reading, you have to visit a lot of good, bad, and phenomenal websites to understand the difference among them. This will lead you to find your own unique style, which definitely takes time to develop and just gets better and better the more you design. It's kind of like this quote. If you see a great master, you will always find that he used what was good in his predecessors and that it was this which made him great. Ultimately, it comes down to taste. It comes down to trying to expose yourself to the best things that humans have done and then try to bring those things into what you're doing. Knowing what and when to steal, though, isn't always that straightforward. Just because a site is ugly doesn't mean the content or architecture is necessarily bad. It can be hard to generate copy for small business websites. Fortunately, many small business websites just brain dump everything they can think of onto their websites, kind of like this. <laughs> Lovely, right? So pay attention to even the ugliest site's content. You never know. This copy might be fantastic or at least inspire some ideas for page content. Pay attention to everything, the headline copy, to the types of images and illustrations, menu navigation structures, page layouts and about page stories, typography and colors used. Collect and make note of all the things you like on each site you visit. Here's where I look for inspiration. First, review your competitors' websites. Because most of you are making local small business websites, you're going to find a lot of nearby small businesses either don't have a website or their websites look like they're from 1929. I don't usually get very inspired by these types of websites, obviously, but I do it because I need to know what my direct competition is doing or not doing so I can do it way, 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 way better. Here's a few ways to find local competitors' websites. So you can search Yelp. And unfortunately, you can't tell if a business has a website from the search results. But uh, So you'll have to open a new tab for each one, Command-T or Control-T, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, and look to see if they have a website. So just open a bunch of tabs and then look for the website where it's highlighted in the teal. You could also search Facebook, just, you know, like by doing coffee shops nearby or whatever it is you want to do, and then, you know, do the same thing you just did as Yelp, open new tabs, and see which ones have websites in the About section on their page. And you could also Google, but that's mostly just going to pull up Yelp and other directory listing sites, so it might not be that useful. Next, you can review industry websites. So after you've researched your local competition, it's time to find the best of the best industry websites so you can get inspired to make a phenomenal website specifically tailored for your type of business. For example, I'm making a, a cupcake website. And during this inspiration phase, I discovered some pretty decent websites by Googling best cupcakes. From the search results, I clicked on a post that featured a long list of the best cupcake bakeries. Then I visited every website featured on the list. And what did I find? Well, a few were actually pretty damn good. Here are some of the results I liked and why. This is a, a company in California that I love. Um, this copy on this page is exactly what I love. It's funny, it's clever, and it's just awesome. I love the simplicity of the design too. Let's not beat around the bush. If you're as serious about baking as you are about getting baked, then get at us. We're always looking for people who are committed to carbs. That's, that's great. I love it. This is the same site and this is their shop. I just love the simplicity of it and how the images are transparent, PNGs. It's just very clean. This one, I like the fonts. I like the tagline, BS all you want. Like that's pretty clever because it's a coffee shop, get it? Like sit and BS all you want. <laughs> um, and then good image, um, it's got a great angle. And then I like how at the very top, there's uh, hours are front and center because this is usually an up-to-date information because this is, uh, this is important. This is like information that people are looking for when they're searching. For this one, I like the way the menu is. I think it's neat in the center. It's a little different and uh, feels right for this website, which is kind of like cozy. I love the cutesy illustrations overlaid on the um, background image. And I think the image is really great and it matches the color palette. Then this website had so much content for me to consume. So like look at all the pages of content I had to creep on. I think that this gave me a lot of ideas for copy. Like look at how funny. It's not really funny, but I mean, it's pretty good. Love it first bite. I like it. <laughs> great copy. I love the hashtag idea at the top where it says celebrate with us. Celebrate with Susie. 
um because that's like promoting people talking about it on social and then i like the prominent but like non non-invasive like order button in the corner because that's obviously an important uh call to action for this business for this i love the patterns and some of its font choices um, you'll notice like it's just like Wistia where it matches its patterns, but they're different colors and stuff. So they keep it consistent, but different. I like that. Next, we would scour inspiration directories. This really helps me. Um, here's some sites that I love or inspiration directories that I love. Um, Flat Inspire, One Page Love, Dribble, Pinterest, Site Inspire, The Best Designs, and webdesigninspiration.com. The ones in blue are my favorite. And I link to all of these below. So how do you document your inspiration? You'll want to document your inspiration so you can refer back to it when you're creating your brand style guide. In this lesson, we'll create a Pinterest board and add screenshots of things you liked from various websites you visited, as well as a brief note about what you liked about it. Once you finish adding screenshots, figure out which elements, if any, don't go with the rest of the shots you collected. This is good to do because it's likely you'll have some elements that clash with each other. I always do. At the end of this lesson, you need to choose a color palette and fonts for your website. You'll also have an idea of which type of visuals your site will include. Step one. First, we're gonna create a secret Pinterest board and go nuts, pinning images that reflect the tone, style, and color scheme we're aiming for with the website. Don't worry about filtering right now, just collect everything your little heart desires. I love this stage. Next, make sure to include a quick note about why you pinned this pin. What did you like about it? This will be useful later. It can be difficult to know what exactly you're searching for at first, so I'll use my fictional cupcake bakery as an example to jumpstart your brainstorming. So I started by searching cupcake bakeries on Pinterest because I wasn't really sure what to search for at first. I figured this wouldn't be a great search term, but I knew that Pinterest would recommend other words for me to search at the top where I can like filter down the, the images to more specific ones that I like. So you'll notice that you can see my notes in the blue boxes um, about what I liked for the different things. Um, when I was looking, I stumbled upon some gorgeous girly logos, which brought me to this cute little website filled with tons of pre-made logos. I went through all the logos and saved the ones I liked to my board since I had to create a logo since this was a fictional business that didn't really have one. <laughs> Next... I began thinking about the actual cupcakes, my product, because I wanted my cupcakes pictures to look beautiful. Pictures are obviously really important. So I wasn't finding anything I really loved on the style of Pinterest. So I went to Google and I did an image search for a website I knew had the type of photos I wanted. And then I saved the photos I liked and saved them to my board. Next, I wanna start thinking about the about page and the team shots. So. To start, I searched for the term businesswoman on Pinterest, but because I'm working on a bakery site, that wasn't really the right term in internet lingo. So I went onto Google and image searched the founder of the cupcake website I loved. That gave me some inspiration to pin to my inspiration board, as you can see. Finally, I thought it might be cool to have some shots of the kitchen, so I did some searching for kitchen bakery shots. I also knew I wanted my client to have a cute dog to include on the team page, so I did a Pinterest search for adorable dogs because I needed inspiration for the type of image I wanted to get of her dog. I thought the dog looking at food or a cupcake with big eyes would be a great idea, so I found a few images like that. Next, look for patterns and similarities. Once you have about 30 to 40 images, it's time to look for similarities and patterns between your pins. After reviewing my board and even before I did, I had a clear idea of what I wanted my website to look like and feel like, but there were some things that clashed with each other. For example, I seem to love bright colors, but then I go into this gold and pale pink binge, like clashing. <laughs> as much as I personally love loads of color, I think the pale pink and gold fit for my client's customers is better, and so I'll probably stick with the pale pink and gold. Refine and layout. The purpose of this stage is to make choosing a color palette easier. So before we get started, let's chat about what a color palette consists of. So a color palette includes three to six colors, one to three main colors. Uh, this is the most used colors in your branding. One to two pop colors, which is optional, sparingly used just to highlight important information. And then one to two neutral colors used in your body and paragraphs must be easy to read. So keep in mind that color palettes very much affect the personality of a website. Um, and there's a few different ways you can figure out your color palette. 
But one quick note before we move on. Do not worry about this being perfect. This mood board is just for you. It's just to help you pick a color palette and sight style. So don't overanalyze it. Um, don't be a perfectionist. Just just do it. What do they say? Like, don't let perfection get in the way of progress. Um, okay, so option one, if you don't have Photoshop, I rem- or even if you do have Photoshop, I recommend using Canva. It's just way easier. It's um, basically a easy to use drag and drop web app that allows you to design beautiful social media images, presentations, infographics, loads of other things. Anyone can use it. It's so easy. And um, so you're going to create an account and log in and you'll be redirected to something that looks like this uh, page when you click create a design up in the left hand corner. So then you're going to scroll down and look for desktop wallpaper under blogging and ebooks. Click on it. I chose this size because I like to have a lot of room when I design, um, and you'll see why. Once you click on the desktop wallpaper, it'll take you to the layouts tab, the second from the um, bottom or top. And these are just desktop wallpapers. As you can see, um, they give you templates, but you're going to want to go to uploads and upload your own images from your computer. So the ones you save from Pinterest, like the 10 or so, probably less than 10. It's probably not all going to fit. Um, so probably like six ish. And I already uploaded my images because I didn't want you to have to wait. So I just am going to click on each one and add all the images I saved from Pinterest to, um, to my board by just clicking on them. And this does not have to be perfect. Um, do not like go by what you see on Pinterest. I don't know why people waste their time spending that much time on a on a on a mood board because you're not gonna get paid. No one's gonna pay you to make a fucking mood board. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I just don't understand some of these girls on Pinterest. Um, no offense if that's you know something you like to do for fun, but I don't think clients are really gonna pay you for that anyways. So arrange, you can go like overlay it forward or back. It's pretty you know self-explanatory, just like in Keynote or Photoshop, whatever. So I'm just gonna sort these out and kind of like move them around. I might have to delete something because I think I have too many images. And also, oh, and you can crop by just um, double clicking and then dragging and dropping the um, corners. Then you'll just click the arrow, the check sign. But I think I'm gonna have to delete this one because there's just not enough room and it's not that special. Remember, you're just trying to get your color palette from this mood board. So it, again, it does not need to be perfect. I can't reiterate that enough. Also, don't feel like you have to stick to your mood board. Like I, as you'll see, like my, this, this mood board does not match what I actually went with for this site. Um, because to be honest, I don't do mood boards as much. Um, I kind of just added this cause it's easier for like beginners to have to learn how to do this. Like I do think this is important to do, but once you start like doing websites a lot, you won't even need to do this anymore. Um, but it is helpful if you're ever stuck on something, but yeah, don't like, don't be so strict on yourself. Like let yourself, um, change things. If you think it needs to be changed, you need to be agile and like realize you won't always make the right decision, um, or pick the right thing right away. So give yourself some leeway and um, some room to kind of, you know, change things. <laughs> and I'm going to want like the color palette below. So I'm going to go to elements and I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to click the square 
And then I'm going to resize this baby to be like a rectangle. And then I'm going to copy and paste it until I have five, which of course I said you could have up to six and you can. So I'm just uh, not putting in my neutral colors in here because I already know which ones I want to use. Now you're going to go download um, something called Colorzilla. So open a new tab and Google Colorzilla. And then it'll be the first result. And you'll click on the left um, square. And then you'll click install. This allows you to pick um, colors from pages. Um, on the web and then know what the hex code is, which the hex code is like a six a six digit code with the hashtag in front of it. Um, as you'll see in a second, that gives you colors. So pick color from page. Then hover over the color you want. So I love this pink. So I'm going to click on the square and it already copied it, and then I'm gonna click plus, and then I'm gonna paste it, and then the pink's there. And that's the first color of my color palette. And now I'm gonna do this for the rest of the colors. So you're gonna pick the colors you like from the images that you hover over. So let's go with like a hot pink actually, for like one of those pop, uh, for one of those main colors. Now, I don't really like that color hot pink, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to click the pink, uh, the plus or the pink, and then like move this little thingy around, this little dot, and try to get a better pink that I like. And then I'm just going to keep doing this for all my colors. Now I want a green. As you can see, I love colors. <laughs> Which has prompted people to say to me before, you design millennial websites. How rude. <laughs> if I do say so. Uh, I don't like that color green, so we're going to make it lighter. Starting to look like Lily Pulitzer or Kate Spade colors. I love it. Nice and girly for cupcakes. Now I want like a purple. And I love it. The only one I'm not sure about is the green, but, and the blue might be too light. There's also another way, an easier way to generate your color palette. And you can go to, um, you can get pre-made color palettes um, by going to colors.co and clicking the generate button at the top. And then you just hit the space bar to go through each of these. And once you find a color you like, you can um, hover over it. So like this one, I'll just hover over. You can see the alternative shades by clicking on the top thing. And then on the next one, you can drag this with the arrows. And then you just hit the, air, the right hand arrow to keep looking. 
You can also go to um, Flat Inspire or other site directories and see what pre-made color palettes other websites are using that are like really beautiful. So Flat Inspire, you can sort by swatches, um, which you can see at the top. Or you can go by color scheme and pick like blue. And then you can see like if you hover over the colors that the hex code will come up, which is the six digit or five digit, I think it's six, code that um, tells you the color of a website or the color, the given color. <laughs> so if you click through on the title, you'll see all of them. And you could just copy them, take that, take like a piece of one and take a piece of another. You can also go to websites you know you like. Like I know I love Get Dripped's new redesign. Um, I also love Wistia's website. So I could just go there and use my Colorzilla tool and pluck... Um, each of their colors and so I could look around the site and kind of get a feel for uh, how they're using the colors they're using a lot of gradients which I love and a lot of different like gradient colors um, so I could like I'd go around the site and start looking at um, how each page is using those colors so I can kind of get a feel for what they're doing. So they're using green, they're using red, they're using purple. So here's an example of another style guide, which is like my favorite style guide ever. It's Marvel apps. Um, kind of get a feel for like what they look like I always <laughs> copy their color palette for things uh, or like you know not the whole palette but pieces of it I also love Wistia's website it's fucking I love it because I love the patterns that they do like their icons all match and they're consistent it looks so nice but I like look around their pages uh they changed this one a little bit but you can see they're always using the same colors and they have these patterns at the bottom and then at the top of their pages if you go to like a few different pages and check them out see like now they have purple with a different pattern get in touch another pattern choose your fonts so brands should usually include three core fonts a hero font which is for your headings a support font, which is for subheadings and emphasis, and then an easily readable font. So uh, for large areas of text, like paragraphs um, and the body copy, these fonts don't change except to be used in italics or bold in some applications. Now you can check out fonts that you can use for your site by going to fonts.google.com. And you'll see, um, I always get rid of the handwriting one because that's not really legible or good for like web design unless it's like a minimum, like, you know, an exception to your font, uh, to your fonts that you're using. And then you can type in your like logo or like, or like whatever, you know, your header and see how it looks in the actual text for your site. And then you would just click apply to all fonts at the, at below it. And then you'll see like, it all in, in what you want it in. You can like change the um, the font size. You can change like you know you can see the different styles it has. You want one with like a few different types of styles because you want to have options. I personally love big bold fonts for headers, so I would like look at the black. I know I love pop-ins for headlines in the black just looks so big bold and beautiful I also like Ma uh, Montserrat however you say it I don't know how to say it I also like it in the black Roboto as we already saw so I wouldn't use bold for that because if it was a body font um, bold would like be hard to read unless it's like you know you're drawing attention to it on purpose I like Muley if you say that correctly <laughs> like Meriwether for certain types of blogs. 
finally, we're at the end of this, uh, of this video. So you're gonna create your style guide. Now note that this step is totally optional. In fact, I never do it, um, but I wanted to include it in case some of you are interested in doing this. Although I think that for small to medium business clients and startups, bootstrap startups, they're not gonna really appreciate it. So find the link to the style guide template I created for Google Slides below. Um, it can be as in-depth or minimal as you want it to be, but for the purpose of this section, I wouldn't go overboard. I'd make this minimal and tweak it as needed when you're building your site. Minimal can mean something as simple as like a Google Doc that just lists your fonts and colors for being uh, able to refer back easily when you're building your site. You can use an array of different tools though to generate your style guide. This is what the style guide looks like in um, Here's the Google Slides template I made for you guys, which you can make a copy of and edit. Um, if you don't want to use Google Slides, you may want to consider using a more in-depth, free style guide generator like this. It's brand.ai, which I linked to below. Or there's another article where I list even more style guide templates below. So go wild if you want to. <laughs> but don't take too much time on this. It's not really important because it's not part of your deliverables. Now we're gonna outline your site. Um, we're getting so much closer to building out our website. As you can see, it takes a lot of preparation. So get excited, we're about to outline.